the subject of my talk is uh, quite large, and so please forgive me if I'm going to go a little bit faster than normal, just I want to show you most of my images to cover all the subjects uh, during this talk. I know that some of you guys are familiar with some terms, but let's review some of them, uh, the, some terms that I, I'm going to use in my talk. What is PET, for example, it's uh, just a non-invasive uh, imaging procedure to assess metabolic activity and perfusion in some organs. We label some biological active compounds, mostly using uh, F18, and, uh, which is a positron emission isotope. When you have this biological active compound, you can inject it and the drug localize into the patient. Uh, the isotope decays and emit a positron the positron uh, travels for a little bit, and then at the end, it uh, stopped by the tissue and forms a positronium, which annihilates into back-to-back -back, uh, 511 keV photons that can be detected by uh, uh, some in uh, coincidence uh, detectors. And then we use an electronic collimation to uh, in analyze the position of the um, isotopes inside the patient body. Usually for uh, um, why we use FTG, PET, and why we use glucose, because malignant, uh, malignant cells uh, have an increased expression of uh, GLUT transporters one and six and an upregulation of exokinase activity. So since FTG follows the same metabolism of glucose, uh, can be studied, but you know that FDG six phosphate cannot be further metabolized. So most tumors have because uh, they have a low phosphatase activity, we can use it for evaluation of metabolic trapping or FDG. So there is a preferential accumulation of FDG in neoplastic cells, but this is not specific of cancer cells. You have inflammatory condition that are the causes of uh, false positive FDG uptake because fibroblasts, inflammatory cells can take up FDG. Uh, we you, PET allows you to go through some uh, uh, um, quantification of FDG uptake using this formula over here. Uh, it's, uh, some people have, uh, uh, crit have criticized this formula, but it's still attractive for, for uh, clinical use. Uh, uh, the application of PET has been, uh, has been increased by the um, appearance of a combined PET-CT hybrid technique or a device is basically is using um, two devices, CT in front and the PET on the back usually, to have a simplicity, maybe a simplicity approach, but it it's really works because you can have a better localization or activity inside the patient body using CT, using a fusion hardware instead of a complex uh, software fusion uh, um, uh, apparatus is basically done in this way. Uh, the patient is translated through a, a bed inside first the CT devices and then the PET devices later on. And this permits a better evaluation of localization activity inside the patient uh, structures and then a faster throughput of the patient and a better utilization of both devices. The fusion occurs in the war station usually. So uh, images may be displayed in any plane or slices, as you can see over here in the sagittal view and axial view. You also have what is called a 3D rendering and a scout image for best localization. Of course, when you have this fusion uh, apparatus, you may be aware that there are some uh, imaging challenges uh, being caused by artifacts, caused by contrast, by metal, by muscle uptake on respiratory motion. I will show you some images. This is uh, what is the beam hardening effect caused by bilateral uh, hip prosthesis. You can see there is overcorrection around the right femoral head. There is no present on non attenuated images, and there is fairly um, lack of exact localization of, of activity in the lower uh, portion of the pelvis. In this other uh, example, for, uh, it, you may see that increased generalized uptake in the muscle since this patient had a milkshake just before the injection of FDG. 
So the increased insulin effect has shifted all the FDG to the muscles. And uh, on this other issue, uh, there is another in fairly, in 4% of patients, you may see this other uh, paraphysiological uh, effect. As you can see, there is increased uptake in the supraclavicular area. Uh, this artificial, just because of the cold weather, this patient has an activation of the brown, brown adipose tissue, which is uh, uh, a kind of adipose tissue that has increased uh, number of cytochrome and mitochondria got activated, activated for thermogenesis. Another aspect can be uh, oh, increased uptake in the uh, um, skeleton caused by rebound effect after chemotherapy or injection of uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factor and can, can cause increased uptake in the bone marrow. Sometimes when the patient is acquired with arms down, there's not the usual presentation, you may have infiltration, you may see infiltration of the dose. That can cause underestimation or activity in the patient body and we should be aware of that. And uh, there is some kind of generalized increased uptake in the bowel, fairly common, has been uh, uh, related to increased activation of the mucosa or increased uh, lymphoid tissue in the colon. Um, sometimes there is, it's more evident in the right lower quadrant in the sigma area. It's common finding. Respiratory motion, since PET is acquired on free respiration or in CT on uh, respiratory arrest, you may have this kind of uh, strange artifact between uh, the interface between lung basis and the liver dome. Or in this other case, there is a decrease uptake around the liver dome. They can cause some kind of uncertainty on the evaluation of nodules at the lung basis with underestimation of SUV uptake in these areas. Or mislocalization where uh, a positive finding on PET doesn't have any corresponding finding on CT, but then on the next slide you will see it. And uh, so uh, we need to be careful also with some misregistration that may happen, especially in the neck acquisition where uh, involuntary uh, patient motion can cause this relaxation of the muscle in the neck and uh, a different position of the non-corrected images versus the CT images. So the fused images are gonna uh, appear pretty strange with decreased uptake in some uh, areas of the patient body comp uh, comp or overcorrection on the rest of it. So let's talk about some uh, thoracic application. I have limited my talk about evaluation of a single pulmonary nodule and lung cancer and some inflammatory diseases. Oh, regarding the um, evaluation of single pulmonary nodules, we know already that CT has the ability to differentiate between uh, uh, benign and malignant disease according to some CT characteristic. However, there are still some uh, uh, areas of uh, uh, uncertainty. Some, uh, uh, some uncertainties are really evaluated using some other uh, characteristic like uh, the doubling uh, time or uh, patient characteristic using contrast enhancement. But FDG PET can have a role in these cases. Actually, since 93 from the uh, uh, Duke University group has been shown that um, PET is basically superior to CT with high accuracy if you use an SUV cutoff for 2.5 to um, differentiation between uh, malignant and benign disease in the uh, lungs. Actually, a review or recent review of um, more than uh, uh, 1,500 lesions has shown that sensitive specificity and accuracy of FDG PET for malignant versus benign disease is pretty fairly high, and the cost effectiveness is basically related to uh, prevention of unnecessary thoracotomies in some patients. So, uh, some example of this is that. For example, this nodule seen on the uh, left lung of this uh, patient is not having some really no increased uptake, so fairly can be considered to be benign follow up with CT. And this other one instead is speculating some ground glass opacity around it and has uptake on, on, uh, on uh, PET uh, is uh, of concern. Um, so who is supposed to have PET 
when you have a case of single pulmonary nodules? Well, the American, uh, associ um, the American College of Chest Physicians says that according to the risk stratification of people, uh, we can divide patients in very low or low risk patients. Very low risk, pa very low uh, risk patients are, the, the PET evaluation is not justified because the uh, probability of disease is so low that the cost effectiveness is not uh, justified. But for low risk patients, when you have a, a pretty much fair amount of risk between 5% and 20%, well, PET assessment is justified if the lesion is more than one centimeter. And this evaluation has been uh, done on the basis of PET uh, evaluation, not a PET CT, where actually right now we got better data about the lesion less than one uh, centimeter. Uh, for intermediate risk patient, PET is really justified because we can push the patient to a low risk situation or a higher risk situation and uh, still there are no data available of the utility of PET-CT in these cases. Even though we, in high-risk patient, um, it, you know, uh, according to the uh, probability of disease, uh, the best approach is gonna have to have a needle biopsy, uh, there is still a role of PET for evaluation of stent of disease for or possible pre-stage uh, um, uh, on patient in view of uh, uh, radiation therapy planning. This patient where there is an, in, um, uh, an um, uh, increased uptake in the lung nodule, you can see in the next one. There is no uptake in the lymph nodes in the chest, so patient has been stage stage one. On this other patient where you cannot see really activity in the mediastinum, you have a um, fairly good amount of uh, um, diffuse uh, opacity uh, on the on, on bilateral upper lobes and, and uh, on the other, but they're not really positive, so they can be followed with uh, CT for evaluation of stability. In this other patient, for example, there is increase. There was a question of possible nodule in the left apex. It's very intense with an SUV around eight. A well was found to have another nodule in the breast that was uh, uh, not considering the first, um, uh, in the first evaluation, and this turned out to be just a metastatic cancer from a breast primary. Uh, which are the potential false negative on PET? Basically, are related to the threshold discrimination of uh, nodules uh, in, uh, uh, in the PET scanner. There's basically uh, around four millimeter in the central field of view, and the false negative can um, be uh, um, uh, due to slow growing uh, malignancy like a bronchovirus or carcinoma and carcinoid. They are very well differentiated, so they are not, uh, they don't upregulate GLUT uh, receptors. Uh, for example, in this, this is a case of one nodule in the uh, right upper lobe that's in, dimensionally, it's around uh, six millimeter, is below the resolution of PET and must be followed with uh, CT. In this other case, that's a um, proven bronchovirus carcinoma, you can see quite large uptake is around 4.7. This other case of bronchovirus carcinoma where there is a more ground glass component, there is no uptake on PET, even though uh, by sides, it's in, inside the resolution of the scanner. Most of the time, the situation that we are facing that where the ground glass density got more solid component that can give you some uptake that was around 1.4. Uh, definitely, this was proven to be bronchovirus cell carcinoma. It's not an inflammatory condition, so the role of PET in uh, slow-growing tumors is still has to be validated. Uh, false positive for malignancy in uh, uh, PET evaluation are basically derivated by infl inflammatory condition and uh, some other uh, causes are hiatal hernia, atherosclerosis, or venous thrombosis. This is a patient who has several nodules, turn out to be very intense on FDG PET. They are uh, related to uh, tuberculosis. This other patient also have an MAI infection with positive uh, uh, nodes in the mediastinum. The uptake was really intense. Definitely no malignant, was just an opportunistic infection. And another left uh, lung infiltrate that you can see the appearance on the, um, on the CT, a very intense uptake on PET, 
this turned out to be a cryptococcosis. And in this other patient with a large infiltrate on the right side, very intense uptake on PET is due to tuberculosis. Another nice case of a patient with bilateral hilar uptake, intense uptake on the, uh, in the lymph nodes, turned out to be uh, sarcoidosis. So regarding no specific lung inflammation, uh, there are some study done on uh, uh, IPF with PET. This is the typical pattern of IPF, maybe in the burnout phases, uh, phase, and you can see there is bilateral uh, in, uh, uptake diffuse, is not intense, since we know that uh, uh, fibroblast shows increased uptake on FDG, and may be more uh, evident at the basis than at the apices, but nobody has exploded the role of FDG PET in uh, IPF cases so far. And in some other cases, you can actually pinpoint region of more intense uptake, and somebody has speculated that um, PET is may able to direct biopsies in these cases. In post-obstructive pneumonia, you've got the same increased uptake. SUV is not useful in these cases, and PCP looks like an intersectional disease uh, with a picture that looks like uh, uh, mm, the same picture that we got on gallium scan with increased uptake diffuse, the similar to the uptake seen on, uh, 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 on the liver. This is another case of uh, uh, post-obstructive pneumonia, very intense uptake on the uh, uh, PET scan and fuse images cannot really differentiate between inflammatory and, uh, and uh, malignant condition. In these other cases, uh, increased uptake on the right base, the on fuse images that correspond to the large hiatal hernia, and this is just normal mucosal uptake in the gastric fundus. And regarding thoracic application, it's used, FDG PET is useful, has been demonstrated as useful in staging prognosis, in evaluation of recurrences, in assessing response to therapy, in the radiation therapy planning. For example, regarding metastinal assessment, since uh, 94 with the Duke group, uh, PET has been shown as more specific and more sensitive than CT in evaluation of metastinal node. And an over, uh, just a review of the past uh, prospective study of more than 50 patients has shown that uh, PET is more sensitive and specific for evaluation of uh, mediastinal uptake. In this case, for example, there is no uptake in the mediastinal with a large uh, positive malignant lesion on the right hilum. These nodes that you can see on CT are completely negative on PET. These other nodes are completely negative on PET. So uh, we can stage in a better way lung cancer using PET CT, like in this case in a stage one patient. And in stage two, as you can see, there is a better delineation of activity in the hilum. Um, or in this case, on the, on the nose more cell, lung cancer stage 3A, that you can follow the activity along the right paratracheal region. As you can see in the upper portion, there is a right paratracheal ipsilateral positive lymph node. On stage 3B, when you have a left side uptake with diffuse involvement of the mediastinum, subcarinal, contralateral higher up to the uh, right supraclavicular region. In stage 4, and a PET can be really useful because it can assess um, um, uh, metastasis, contralateral metastasis as well of some undetected uh, um, positive uptake. This is the primary lesion, very large, extremely bad prognostic factor, more than 11. And uh, this node was seen on PET, was considered positive. Biopsy was positive for uh, metastasis. Contralateral uptake, very intense, and some other uptake in the hilum and in another nodule in the same area. C, especially CT PET devices are now very useful for evaluation of pleural involvement and chest wall invasion and evaluation at electasis versus tumor. Um, usually, a pleural involvement is seen as, as increased uptake along the pleural, very intense, 
corresponding to the pleural effusion get a sensitivity to specificity pretty high. Sensitivity is around 100%, specificity is around between 80 and 100%. In this other case though, when there was a pleural effusion, you can see the primary looks very intense and there is no uptake in the size of the pleural effusion and so uh, this was proven to be a benign effusion. In some other case where there is a, you see the difference between benign and pleuritis and or false positive uh, um, findings, it's not so evident or in case of tuberculosis. So um, uh, I don't really believe to the kind of high accuracy that some articles have showed, but definitely there is a large and borderline situation. Uh, Regarding the role of FDG PET in evaluation at electasis vessel tumors, you may see that there is a better delineation of the tumor border in this cavitary lesion with no evidence of uptake in the atelectasis changes uh, behind the, uh, um, mm, the primary. As in this case, there is some uptake around it. It's definitely not uh, uh, in the malignancy range. Can, uh, there may be some overlapping inflammatory condition on top of this. Uh, malignancy. Usually regarding distant metastasis, usually the usual sites are adrenals, skeleton and liver. Regarding adrenal metastasis, as you can see, uh, there's been a well, recent article that says that uh, if you use an uh, uptake more than the background of the liver, you have a pretty lar nice accuracy, more than 90% on evaluation of possible malignancy and adrenal involvement. In some other cases, there is a very mild uptake, as you can see in this other case, and this was proven to be related to Addison disease. In case of bone metastasis, as you know, in a recent uh, article, since there is increased specificity and uh, sensitivity of uh, PET versus uh, scan, uh, bone scan, um, has been proposed that there is no role anymore of bone scan in the staging of uh, uh, normal cell lung cancer, and PET can easily uh, uh, replace bone scan in this, uh, in this um, instance. As you can see, there is pretty much uh, nice uh, correspondence between anatomical findings and increased uptake on, on anatomical areas. Okay, in case of liver metastasis, uh, there is not, so far there's not been demonstrated the superiority of uh, PET over CT and ultrasound, even though sensitivity is quite good, as you can see in this area. Regarding prognosis, it's been demonstrated that as you view the primary tumor is now the most powerful prognostic factor in patients with stage 1 and 3B, regardless the treatment, surgery or radiation. Actually, um, a recent article in 2005 uh, show that this, the maximum SUV is considered to be the best predictive factor uh, compared to the TNM, TNM stage and can be uh, used to select patients with uh, uh, normal cell lung cancer can benefit from uh, chemotherapy before surgery. For detection of recurrence, PET-CT got definitely a role, like in this case, post-lobectomy would increase uh, thickness of the uh, along the suture line, as you can see, the uptake along this, uh, m m the right side, the right hilum and the right paratical region is both fairly intense and uh, there was positive for recurrent. So, regarding the response to therapy, PET uh, seems that is more accurate than CT in assessing tumor response after radiotherapy or chemotherapy and actually post neoadjuvant therapy, if there is a reduction of 50% in SUV, plus there is no, no uptake on the mediastinum, this has been shown to improve the two years survival of patient. There's one of the last uh, um, examples I want to show you. This is a pretty uh, nice case of what can be the SUV uptake and post therapy uh, changes uh, this is the port of the uh, radiation therapy, and a patient was really close to the radiation therapy um, before two months, let's say within three, two months of the radiation changes. The SUV uptake is fairly high. There is no way that you can differentiate between recurrent disease or uh, residual disease in this area, judging from these typical patients on, on PET-CT. But when you see this other case, when 
after three or four months radiation, the, uh, from the radiation therapy, you will see the typical appearance of um, very minimal uptake on, uh, on a PET, and there is no way to that is being called as uh, uh, recurrent disease in this, uh, in this patient. The same finding over there. Minimal uptake, positive radiation changes, no recurrent disease. So there is also a, a role for PET-CT in radiation therapy planning. Since PET-CT has been proved that um, mm, provide benefit in 41% uh, percent of patients because of better localization of disease, PET-CT may reduce radiation exposure to some other organs in the mediastinum, like esophagus or in the lung, and allow significant uh, uh, radiation dose escalation. So in summary, for application single pulmonary nodule, there is a high sensitivity to good specificity of PET, and uh, for uh, um, staging uh, prognosis role, response to treatment and radiation therapy planning, there is definitely a role for PET-CT, and PET-CT may also provide further advantages in evaluation of inflammatory disease. Thank you for your attention.